Hello, dear friends. This is the March 2020 horoscope for people who have their sun or rising sign in Leo. So, the greatest news for this month is the ingression of Saturn in Aquarius. That's something huge because Saturn stays in one sign for two years and a half, approximately. So, obviously, this will change a lot of things for us, starting from the areas where we need to work harder, we need to be more consistent. And generally, this would bring different type of rules that we have to respect and we have to follow. For Leo, Saturn will ingress seventh house. And the first thing that it means is that it will no longer be in your sixth house, which is good news when it comes to career, work, responsibilities, and health. And I'm not saying that Saturn is bringing just challenges, so you should, wow, now release all the tension and just feel like, you know, only positive things are going to happen without Saturn, because that's not always true. Saturn can really help us to be more structured, to be more organized, but also Saturn is testing us and it is not easy. So things can go a little bit a little bit easier when it comes to your work, your career, the responsibilities you have on a daily basis, and also your health, because Saturn won't be in your sixth house, at least for now. And it will ingress your seventh house. So the positive manifestation of this ingression is that you might be much more responsible when it comes to relationships, and you may really become more logical when it comes to decisions you take in those areas of relationships, personal contacts, and partnerships. And also, Saturn may help you to get rid of some possible illusions or unrealistic expectations. This is also a position which can be very helpful for business relationships, areas where things are very accurate or you know there are certain rules that everyone needs to follow like it's supposed to be in business saturn really likes that so for the next couple of years you may really focus on this type of building up of relationships which are based on rules on responsibility which are related to treating each other in the right way and also, if there is something that you need to change when it comes to relationships, Saturn may push you to do that. For example, if you are in a dead-end relationship or you are extremely frustrated, but at the same time you didn't have the courage to change something or put the end of it, Saturn may force you to see the truth, to admit the truth, and to take the right decisions. So this would be a theme, not just for the following month, but for the next couple of years. More responsibilities and more logical approach when it comes to your relationships and your partnerships. The other news for March, Mercury is changing directions. At the beginning of the month, it will be retrograde. It is still retrograde, which means be more careful when it comes to documents, starting new things, communication with people, schedule. We can expect that some of those things won't go according to our plans. So we have to check everything to be more careful and if possible, try to avoid important new things that you would like to start, including significant purchases. But on the 9th of March, Mercury change, changes its direction, which means that around the middle of the month and the second half of the month, things should go back to normal. We are gonna have the green light for starting new projects, communication can improve. We may have the opportunity also to fix some of the things that might have been messed up during Mercury retrograde. And the other 
important event of the month are actually the three conjunctions that Mars will have. First of all, conjunction with Jupiter and Pluto in Capricorn, which triggers your sixth house. And this can bring lots of changes when it comes to your work, your daily routines, but also your health. The conjunction between Mars and Jupiter can be very powerful, can be very motivating to do something, to take action, to be more optimistic, to be braver, to be more courageous. However, we need to be careful because sometimes this aspect can bring overestimation of our potential or what we can do over a certain amount of time. And this may be kind of overwhelming because we just try to do too many things at the same time. Of course, this is mostly a positive conjunction, positive aspect. So we expect this to bring us some new opportunities. And for you, those opportunities can be mostly business related, work related, and also related to your health. The conjunction between Mars and Pluto on the other side is not that simple. This can be very empowering as well, bringing incredible motivation and strength and confidence and drive to do something, to take back the control over your work or to do something. And the motivation can be extreme. This is something very typical for Pluto, especially when Mars also joins it. It can get too much. And the challenge is that also Mars and Pluto can bring possible power struggles, confrontations, some kind of attacks between people. And in your case, you have to be more careful when it comes to work and business, with coworkers, with clients, overall, anything that includes the business process. This is an area where things might get too intense. And the last conjunction that Mars will have is with Saturn, but it will trigger different life area because it will happen right after Saturn and Mars ingress Aquarius, which means it triggers seventh house for you, Leo. And this impact is related to relationships and partnerships. And Mars and Saturn are generally not friends with each other. They are completely different. And the challenge of this aspect is that it can bring some kind of limitations, blockages, boundaries, but also things that we need to respect or things that we need to work harder to overcome. So it is possible to have some challenges or resistance coming from partners or other close people around you. But on the positive side, this aspect can make you very hardworking, very consistent, and also focused on achieving something. So if you want to do something together with a partner, it is an option for you with this aspect, but you have to be prepared for very hard work, for more consistency, and also for possible delays. So that's just a general overview of the key events. As you can see, the major areas which are triggered for you, Leo, are sixth and seventh house. So the major focus is work, career, health, and also relationships and partnerships. Those are the major areas where you can concentrate on during March. Also, I have included this list, which can be very helpful to plan the month with the most positive and the most challenging days during the month. You might want to write them down or take a screenshot. And while you do that, I would also like to announce, to invite you to the new program which I have created. The purpose of it is to make a difference in your life. This is a new membership area. It's called Mars Stars Dream Team, and it will give you access to daily horoscopes on an app on your phone. Also access to a private Facebook group, options for receiving um, access to monthly webinars or one-on-one -on -one sessions, and also those presentations will be uploaded there. So if you want to make a difference in your life, 
we can do it together. Check the links and I hope you will join us. So I hope you already wrote those days down and now we can go through each of the key events during the month and quickly pinpoint the major areas which can be affected for you, Leo. The first one happens on the 3rd of March. Venus in your ninth house will square Saturn in your sixth house. Generally, this is a challenging aspect which can bring some kind of frustration on an emotional level, mostly related to work or some kind of long-term goals that you need to reconsider. Be careful also with negotiations and relationships at work, especially with women and also with people, with people who are far away or who live or communicate with you from a distant position like abroad, for example. So this is what it is. It's a challenging aspect, but it's for a very short time. Then on the 4th of March, we have a couple of things happening. First of all, Mercury retrograde will go back to Aquarius. So for the next couple of days, Mercury will be retrograde in your seventh house. And it means that you need to be extra careful with relationships, partnerships, and negotiations. Luckily, just for a week or so while Mercury is retrograde there. On the other side, Venus will ingress your 10th house, and that's great news for work and career. This may really help you to do something that you would enjoy at work, to really feel more comfortable communicating or also negotiating, especially with people who have more power. And at the same time, also Mercury retrograde will have a positive aspect with Venus. And generally, this is a time when you might restart old relationships or communication with people and just feel more comfortable when communicating. After that, on the 8th of March, we have two conjunctions. The first one is between the Sun and Neptune in your 8th house. This is a specific combination from one side it may bring lots of inspiration and creativity it can make you more intuitive more empathic and also it can make you too emotional or over sensitive especially with this position in eighth house so be careful with your emotional reactions i would also recommend you to be more careful when it comes to financial decisions Neptune in 8th house can really blur things, your judgment when it comes to financial decisions. So more attention to this area. And what can be very positive for you is to focus on some kind of spiritual practice, energy practice, and everything which can help you to balance your energy. The other conjunction is between Venus and Uranus in your 10th house. And this is a combination that can bring some surprises at work, something unexpected, something that you haven't prepared for. It can be very exciting. It can be very interesting. So open up for new experiences, for new ideas and experiment. On the 9th of March, we also have some pretty interesting stuff. First of all, Mercury turns direct, which we are very happy about because after that, things should go back to normal when it comes to communication, technical stuff, documents, and everything Mercury related. But on the 9th of March, we still have to be careful because that's the time when Mercury is stationary at the time when it shifts the direction. So this is kind of the last most intense period of mercury retrograde and be extra careful with decisions with technical stuff with everything that might get wrong at the same time there is also a full moon which will trigger your second and eighth house and the major themes of this full moon for you are related to resources how much do you take and how much do you give do you need to shift something so that you would have a better balance in your life when it comes to your energy when it comes to material possessions as well 
and also it can be important for your health. Oops. 11th of March, one of the most positive aspects during the month. Jupiter in your sixth house in positive connection with the sun in eighth house. Great aspect for some new opportunities when it comes to work, for some kind of new projects or more energy for, you know, more optimism. This may also include some financial shifts or finding some resources or receiving some help when it comes to investments, career, work, including health, by the way. This is an aspect that can bring improvement, especially when it comes to energy balance. Then on the 14th of March, another two aspects are triggering the same two houses. Mars in sixth with Neptune in eighth, which can bring more creativity when it comes to your work, more inspiration, increased intuition, and also some kind of support that you might receive quite easily. The other aspect includes the Sun in 8th and Pluto in 6th house, and this is also very empowering, bringing you more strength, more confidence to take control, to do something which will have an impact potentially not just for you, but also for other people as well. For financial decisions, for finding resources, this is also a very supportive aspect. Then on the 16th of March, Mercury is ingressing your eighth house. And this is important because Mercury will go through the same position where it was retrograde earlier. So you may have the opportunity to fix to change, to improve some of the things that might have been messed up during Mercury retrograde, especially related to financial stuff, to resources, to your energy balance, the most typical things that Mercury can trigger in eighth house. And on the 9th of March, another positive aspect between the Sun in eighth house and Saturn in sixth house incredible aspect that can help you to organize and structure your daily life, to schedule things accurately, to organize, especially when it comes to work, business, your daily responsibilities as well. And also this is an aspect that can help you to find the right resources, investments, money, and even health to be more disciplined, if you have to follow certain principles, if you have to stop doing something or start doing something which you know you will affect positively your health, now is a great time to really give it a try. And on the same day later on, the sun will ingress your ninth house. And that, my friends, is a very positive transition. Because ninth house is much more positive, more optimistic than eighth house. And you may have the opportunity to shift your attention to more positive stuff, to some long-term goals, to learning something or exploring some options or even traveling. And that would be true for the following month as well. On the 20th of March, we have the conjunction between Mars and Jupiter that we already talked about, and it will trigger your sixth house, which means lots of focus on work, career, motivation, opportunity to start something new, expansion, increased belief. So just try, give it a try. And on the 21st of March, we have the other significant event, the ingression of Saturn in seventh house. As we said, the rules are shifting. New opportunities might appear when it comes to career, but you have to be more organized and structured when it comes to your relationships. On the 22nd of March, there are another combinations triggering the same houses. Neptune in 8th house with Venus in your 10th house may increase your intuition, may help you to be more creative when it comes to work and business. This is especially positive for artists or people who need more creativity. And even when it comes to financial stuff, this aspect can be helpful. The other combination is between Mercury in 8th house and Uranus in 10th house. And this is also very exciting, very 
interesting combination when it comes to your work, business, and also financial stuff. You may have new ideas, you may create or establish new contacts with important people, and all of that can bring you the opportunity to make a shift when it comes to your career. On the 23rd of March, we have this powerful combination between Mars and Pluto. Now, technically, we have to consider this aspect as challenging because it may really bring some power struggles, some confrontations, some potential challenges, even when it comes to health. But it's not only challenging, it can also bring you lots of power and confidence and motivation to do something, to change something, especially when it comes to career and work. And on the 24th of March, there is a new moon in your ninth house, which changes the atmosphere, which brings a fresh new beginning when it comes to some new long-term goals, new perspectives about the future, and overall focusing on something new that you would like to manifest in your life. So very exciting, very empowering new moon for you, Leo. On the 28th, also very positive aspects between Venus in 10th house and Jupiter and Pluto in 6th house. Two career houses are triggered positively, which obviously means opportunities when it comes to your work or when it comes to creating something material. You might enjoy it. You might invest a lot of emotions into it. You might feel also quite empowered, confident, and you might be successful in what you do because Venus and Jupiter are also the two benefactors. So this can really be incredible opportunity when it comes to work, career, and all kinds of material stuff. The 30th of March comes with the ingression of Mars in your seventh house. And this will bring even more focus to relationships, to partnerships. From one side, they may activate you, motivate you, but there may also be some provocations, so be careful. And what's even more important is that on the very next day, on the 31st of March, there is an exact conjunction between Mars and Saturn in your seventh house. So as we talked about it already, you have to be more careful with relationships at the same time you might work harder on something with another person so if you are patient consistent organized you might create something together probably with the help of another person and that was the most important so as you can see the major houses that are triggered for you during march are sixth and seventh house so focus on work career health and relationships. And don't forget that if you really want to make a difference in your life, you are welcome to join Mars Stars Dream Team. It will give you access to daily horoscopes, to a private Facebook group, to the monthly presentations, and also options for, week, for monthly webinars and one-on-one -on -one sessions. So for more information, check the link below. Thank you so much for your time, as always, and I'll see you very soon.